Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm working on my Edwardian bathing costume this summer and I want to make a complete outfit. My bathing costume is coming along quite well and I'm getting close to being done with that. I'm going to make some bathing boots to go along with it. I'm pretty excited about these. Don't know if they swim in them or not. I imagine you mostly wear them when paddling and like just, you know, getting your feet wet. But I'm pretty excited about them because all the beaches around here are very rocky and have a lot of barnacles. So I'm going to wear them when I go swimming in my outfit because it's painful to not wear shoes swimming in the water here. So I've looked at a lot of inspiration for existent ones in the past. I found a couple tutorials that should be helpful of people making them these days. I'll post those in the description, of course. I've got some supplies. My goal with this was to just use things that I could easily get my hands on. So either things I already had or things that I could easily get in town at the stores. Since I live on an island, there's a limited selection of what I can get. I don't have any of the big name craft stores around me. I'm making it out of this tan cotton canvas duck cloth. It's a bit thicker than I wanted, but this was left over from the last sailboat my dad made. He made the sails out of this and I found them this in the shed. He said I could use some of it. I've got a scrap of a thinner, whiter canvas. I would have liked to have used this for the whole thing, but I only have this much, so I'm gonna use this for some trim. My bathing costume is red and blue, but I'm not making this match it exactly. Like, your accessories don't have to match. It's fine. So I dyed, last night I dyed the canvas blue with just some grit dye. I'm gonna, it's a little damp. I tried rinsing it a bunch with a hose, but I think I'm gonna throw it in the washing machine on a quick wash and dry it so it's ready to go. Then for the soles, I got this cork. It's like a half inch thick or something. So it's big enough to put my foot on, so I'll be able to cut my soles out of this. Then I'm just gonna use like thread and needles that I have laying around. I have a ton of eyelets that I don't like. They're white, I got them because I thought, they're, I heard they're supposed to be dyeable and they're not very dyeable. So I was making some corsets that I was dying. But let's get down to it. I should mention that there's two main styles of bathing boots in this period. It seems like there's the slipper version with like the gladiator ribbon, which how does anyone ever get that to stay up? Or there's the sort of early boxing boot style, which is the style that I'm gonna do. Some of them have tongues, some don't have tongues. I think I'm gonna leave the tongue off because the tongues in my shoes always just fall to the side. Anything that has a high tongue to the side under my foot. I don't know if anyone else has that problem, but no one I've talked to does, but I'm sure there's other people out there like me. So I've got some paper and pencil in my feet. Some people trace a shoe that they like the fit of. I only have sneakers, chacos, or rain boots here, so I'm not going to do that. I got pretty narrow feet, so I'm going to just trace my foot. And smooth it a little bit into a better shape. Plus, I don't want it to be like exactly fitting my foot and it is too tight, you know? So I'm gonna add a little bit of space. But let's just make sure this fits when I'm standing up and all my weight is on my foot. My foot doesn't like smash, smush out. That looks like it'll work. Or I'll just write that the same allowance. So I don't forget. Alright, now I need to make the upper portion. Alright, now I need to figure out how the upper is gonna go. So. I think I want it to come, uh, like, 10 inches up. It's about mid calf on me. So let's measure how big my calf is here. It's gonna come up. T 
10 inches. It's going to be 12 and a half inches around, but there's going to be a gap at the front where it doesn't lace all the way shut, so we'll see it's a 2 inch gap. We'll just say it's a 5 inch around because, you know, cut it in half for each side. We'll say it's 5 inches. Sounds dandy. This shoe pattern is 11 inches long. Pretty handy for me. My shoes generally are about 12 inches long, so then I can very easily measure a foot. Quite handy. My foot is almost literally a foot. 11 inches. And then it's gonna go up 10 inches. And it's gonna come out five inches at the top. So now, I've never done this before, so I'm just kind of making this up. My foot starts rising up about seven inches in, so we will say that that's seven inches is where it has to start going up. So if that's five inches up top, that's wider than the seven down, what's left down here. So we'll think about that. But to go over my foot from the middle to top is three and a half inches. And feet, see it goes, it comes in by the heel and then widens back up. So I'm gonna have to have this little heel shape here. I guess I'll just sketch in a shoe shape, huh? Come in for the heel. And back up. So I have a shape here that looks pretty wonky, but maybe I'll give it a go and see how it turns out. I've got my mock up from my bathing costume. I'm gonna use this fabric for this mock up. So I've got these two pieces cut out now. I'm gonna go and stitch them up, give them a little press first, and then we'll see how they fit together. I'm just gonna sew up to like here, and then when I try it on, I'll just sew it together with thread or something like I would laces. All right, so unsurprisingly, that didn't work at all. The circumference of the foot is much larger than the circumference of this side pattern piece. So, I need to think about what I want to do. I've got a couple options. I could keep futzing around. Clearly this needs to be longer. And then I'll probably take some out in here and have it start lacing lower down so then I can fit my foot in easier. This in here feels pretty fine. So I guess I'll just add some length See what that does. I have about a ton extra. I'm just gonna add a bunch of length and then cut it off afterwards. It looks comically like I'm making court gesture shoes or something, but it makes sense that there needs to be extra width to go around this area, because I only measured from here to here, but there's that whole section that needs to go across. So I'm gonna go stitch these up again and see how they work. I managed to fit that in there. It's not the prettiest in places, but it fit. And uh, looks like I made it for the other foot. So let's see how that goes. Well, it fits. I think I need to take a bunch out up here. I think I'll cut a piece of cardboard or something to put in the sole to make sure it sits flat. And then I'm gonna figure out what adjustments I need to make, but I think it's getting closer. I don't know how you, what you do to get rid of these sort of pulls in the fabric. I'm sure there's lots of shoe making techniques that I am not doing. I would love to learn how to make shoes. I would quite like to get some lasts at some point to be able to do things like this easier. 
but we're working with what we got, right? So I got this like giant tuck of fabric. I need to figure out how to take it out. This one, I put a cardboard sole in here so that it will hold this shape a little bit more and make sure that the sides of the fabric are not like folding up around my foot and giving me a false perception. I think I'll sew it farther up this way, take some room out of this toe area, and then I think I'm just gonna leave these kind of like not fitted that well area because I'm not sure how to take it out and I would rather just go on with it. Over here, I do have a lot of space here. I wonder if I can make this smaller, take this in here. I think I'm gonna try that. Cut apart that mock-up. Now the inside piece is a little bit different shaped than the outside piece. Here's the sole. I need to cut this out of cork as well. These don't have seam allowances in them. So I need to remember to add those on. I'm not gonna add seam allowance from here. I'm gonna put bias tape around the opening then I need to figure out how I'm attaching the bottom of the shoe to the sole. The cork is going to go a little bit wider and then I think this will have a wide that flips out and it will get sewn around the edge, like laying flat. So better to do it too big than too small, right? I also am going to put some stripes up top here, but I'm going to wait on those because they'll be easy to add in later. Good thing my feet aren't any bigger. Nor wouldn't be able to fit them on very efficiently for with the seam allowance. I have to cut them this way. I only get one per sheet. They get a little flat because of how they fit on the board, but I think I can just pretty that up later. fabric lightened up a little bit from when I pulled out of the dye bath, but that's all right. I like it just fine. It's also a little modelly, but you know, it's gonna be a-okay. I need four of these. Two of each of these. This is the inside because it curves in a little bit more, so you can have one inside and one outside per foot. And I think that will hopefully make it so that there's two different feet. We'll see. But I'm going to go stitch this line up. I'll probably pin this together and lay it on my foot to see how it's going to fit. And then I think I will add the stripes before stitching it up because I should probably put all the grommets in before I put the soles on. I only have this dark blue bias binding, but I think I'm going to use this for this edge and for the top edge. And then I think I'm going to put these white stripes on, three white stripes using this, um, it's like a casing for bones. So I'm just going to use it, put some stripes on. I'm going to put them on now because that will be... A lot easier. This looks real hodgepodgey. This kind of didn't turn out so nice. I should probably clip the seam and then it'll turn out nicer. Hopefully. I keep changing my mind on how I'm, what order I'm going to put these together in, but I've decided I need to sew the bottom on so that I can see how this top fit fits before I put in the eyelets and the trim, just because I don't want the trim being like completely crooked. And then I will attach the sole on here somehow and then sew this and this together and then I'll take bias tape and finish that edge. But when I pin this on one of the feet, I had this big extra bit. So I don't know, I'm just gonna chop it off. Might be a mistake. We'll find out, eh? Something I should note though is that I have put the seam on the outside. So see, this is the right side of the fabric because I want to have a little, um, left over the seam allowance on the outside so that I can stitch it down to the sole. Here are the bathing boots sewn up to start with. So they will 
lace up here. There's still a lot of fabric in here. I should maybe come in and take some more of that out. I'm gonna put in the stripes now. Make sure these are not angling up too much. Put the trim on, put this trim on, and the eyelets. And then I think I'll still be able to come in and take some of this off if I want. But they're coming along. They look big and silly, but you know, my feet aren't that small. I set all my grommets into the boots. They really got kind of messed up. The white paint came off. I really hate this grommet setter. It's one where you go like that, and then you go like this. When I pulled this out of the box, it was super crooked. This was like way off center. As I went on, it straightened out a little more. It still got a little off centerness to it. And they didn't set the best on the back, but they will be good enough for now. I used up a bunch of those white ones. I hate them. They won't go away. They just never end. But they're good enough for the boots. So now I'm at this stage. Just need to put the cork soles in. But I have... I'm going to go back to working on the swimming costume. Because I need to get that done priority by Sunday. I ran out of blue trim. I have to try to find some more, I guess. I don't have enough. I was going to trim all the way around the sole, but I don't have enough. The pharmacy doesn't sell any. The quilt store you have to make appointments to go to. Don't know if I'm going to do that or see if I can find it somewhere. I don't know. Where? Drive defensively. Always wear your seatbelt. Obey traffic laws and never use handheld electronic devices while driving. Motor vehicle accidents are the second most common cause of injuries. Be alert for the presence of dogs and do not enter an area where a dog is present without talking to the dog's owner. <laughs> I was trying my best to okay. I sewed the soles onto these bathing boots last night. It went way easier than I expected. I used a large needle and some doubled up thread. I didn't use the sewing machine because I didn't know if my machine could handle it. I was also worried about the stitch length being too short and making it like a perforated edge and it just falling apart. So I just stitch it through. Easy. Now I'm going to trim the excess off, trim the seam allowance down a little bit more. And then I want to put this bias binding onto the, around the edge of the boot, but I don't have enough. I'm like, you know, a few inches short, of course. So I will just see how far I can do it and then try to find some more somewhere. It takes pretty much exactly the same amount to go around this upper portion as it does to go around the bottom, which is kind of fun. But from one packet, I can't do all four. Maybe if my feet were smaller. When I was sewing these all together, I just held them together. Some people put glue, I don't really feel like doing any glue, so I just like held it and made sure it was lining up pretty well. There were a couple spots where I put a pin through to hold it in place, but overall it was pretty easy to just hold it.
I was really close to being able to finish these with the binding, but I ran out just that far. I did wear these to the beach already once, so they're, they got a little worn without the bias binding, so clearly it is very important. But I went to the thrift store, did this packet of miscellaneous bias tape for $1.50, and in it is the navy blue I need, so I should have enough now. Here's the finished boots. They fit pretty well, the soles and everything went okay. When I go in the water with them though, they definitely go like this. Overall, I'm really pleased with how they turned out. They're pretty good for my first pair of shoes, I think. And for self-drafting my own pattern, not too bad. I know I promised everyone a video of my full outfit, so come back next week and I'll show you how it all turned out together. In the meantime, I've been putting together a playlist of all the different Edwardian bathing costumes I could find being made on YouTube, so go check that out. Don't forget to subscribe and leave me a comment. Have a great week!